Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trusted CI webinar for September 25th, 2023. I'm your host, Jeanette Dopheide. Trusted CI is the NSF Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, and these webinars are part of its mission to deliver high quality, actionable guidance regarding cybersecurity to the NSF community. More information about Trusted CI can be found at trustedci.org. Today's topic is improving the privacy and security for data wastewater based epidemiology with me, True. Uh, Nee is an assistant professor at Arizona State University. Her research interests lie in the area of cryptography and security with specific focus on secure computation and its applications, such as private set intersection, private database queries, and privacy-preserving machine learning. Before we begin, I have a few things to note. First, this presentation is being recorded. Second, um, participants are welcome to ask questions during the presentation using the chat box, or we'll take questions at the end. And with that, I'll hand things over to Ni. Nee. Ni, nee, welcome. Uh, yeah, hi everyone, and thank you for the uh, uh, introductions. Uh, yeah, and I'm Ni nee Chiu, and uh, I will start my presentation today. Uh, so this is about uh, our CI-CI project, uh, and uh, we have it, uh, I think we have it uh, already two years, and this is the last year. And uh, the the project about uh, privacy and security for wastewater data. Uh, all right. Yeah. So here is the outline of uh, the talk today. Uh, so uh, before going into that, I just want to before going into the wastewater data, uh, I just want to start my presentation uh, with. Uh, data security in general. So, you know, uh, when data come from different sources, uh, you right now, we, you see, we need the data privacy, right? So for example, uh, we have a few city here and they want to do some computation on the, their, their data. So what can they do for now? So at the moment, if you don't want to share the data to directly to the cities, uh, you can trust someone in the middle, right? And here, for example, we trust a server and um, all the cities send the data records uh, to, to the server. And this server do some computation, uh, either machine learning computation or some matching computation and return the output to the query, the, the city who want, who want to get the, the, the final output, right? And clearly, this is a third party solution. And um, can we say this one is uh, privacy preserving? Uh, so, what happens if uh, the server is malicious, right? So, it's re not really the privacy preserving computation for now. Um, yeah. So, uh, the question now is how to do secure computation in general? So I'm working on cryptography and uh, today uh, there is two popular techniques. Uh, one is multi-party computation. And uh, for that technique, uh, people usually present uh, the function at the circuit. And somehow they do gabbling, encoding and decoding. Uh, yeah, this one, one, one of the uh, techniques for secure computation. And another one here is homophone encryption. Uh, so it's kind of encryption, but it's allow you to do the computation on the encrypted data. So uh, my the TikTok focus on homophone encryption. So my not you might not care about the MPC part. Uh, yeah, and MPC usually uh, efficient, but uh, it's not easy for to understand. And homophic encryption, is, the concept is very simple and can be used for any non-expert people. So that's why we choose homo homophic encryption to implement uh, the secure data, uh, secure wastewater data. Yeah. Um, so if we have homophic encryption, uh, what can we do? So you see here, uh, for example, now we also use server. But instead of sending the data records to the server directly, uh, we can send uh, the, 
the records under encrypted form to the server. And because uh, it's under encrypted, so the server doesn't know anything about them unless the server see the key, right? Uh, we will talk about who have the key, who is not have the key later. But for now, or some that the server don't have the key, right? And similarly, uh, all the cities, all the parties uh, send their encrypted record to the server. And as I mentioned before, uh, the encryption allows to compute on encrypted data. So uh, the server can do any computation on it. And in this kind of training, of uh, like machine learning training or something, so the server returned encrypted model to, to the person who wrote the query. And because having, yeah, in this case, I use the same key, but say having this, uh, the secret key, uh, this guy can decrypt and learn the computation, right? So this scheme uh, can be considered like secure because the server learn nothing about the data. And only the how to say only the person who have the decryption who have the decrypted key, I mean the secret key, can learn the data, right? Uh, yeah, but any problem with that? Uh, so first, if you applied homophic encryption directly, uh, it's not an expensive solution. And also, uh, as I mentioned before, who have the key, who know the keys, uh, we can go to that one later. Before now, uh, you can think like, uh, we, we require different keys for dif different parties. Yep. All right, um, clear about the program statement. Uh, I mean, the uh, secu data security in general. And now, uh, how about security for wastewater data? This is what our proposal proposed. Uh, so the main key here is that uh, we're looking in some wastewater computation and uh, provide some secure protocols. Uh, I mean, some specific protocol for uh, wastewater computation. And we call WBE uh, for now. So uh, the proposal, uh, we, in the proposal, we can seek up three things. Uh, the first thing here is about uh, secure query, which we will talk today. And the second one is about privacy preserving uh, analysis uh, or privacy preserving, uh, 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 I mean, kind of privacy preserving machine learning. And we also talk about it a little bit in the last few slides. And, uh, Another thing about uh, genomic privacy. So in this, in our uh, product, uh, our proposals, uh, we propose three things. Uh, uh, first two things, you homophobic encryption, and the last one, you difference of privacy, uh, where we add the noise to the raw data. And um, this way, somehow we, you can hide the data, but not completely hide, uh, but, but not completely hide the, in book data, yeah. All right, um, and uh, for, for computations, uh, uh, I mean, com the computation related to wastewater data, we have uh, ser several scenarios. And um, today uh, we're talking about the second one where we want to study some collab collaboration among the cities. Um, yeah, so I will go closely to pro uh, problem statement, which is one of what this is one of the problem that uh, we're working on. Uh, so uh, some that we have uh, a few catchment areas. So like for example, this is X and Y and X and Z. So they have three catchment where uh, catchment areas. And uh, the catchment area here kind of you consider like the sample collective point. And you know, uh, usually like in the river or something, in the float, uh, you have X, right? And the flow from X 
go to T, T here, and then they continue go to S. So we have a uh, one city. Uh, I mean, for example, the city at ASU they collect the data as uh, X at the point T, right? And another city because this is flow, so it means that another city collects the wastewater sample from the point S. So you see that the S contains some information about the point T. Yeah. So I think at this point, you might see why we need privacy, right? Uh, now the CTC here, because the CTC, uh, sorry, the CT2, they want the catchment area for uh, uh, for the error is these. So it means that they need some information at a point T so that they can compute the thing in the in the seats, right? Yeah. And again, uh, the circuit, uh, the data uh, here is that uh, maybe some uh, some correlation, they contain like DNA uh, or they can contain some sensitive information and the city one one able, I mean, can able unable to give the uh, the shamble the catchment the shamble at the party to the city too. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not sure if you if you're not working on the wastewater uh, areas, uh, maybe it cover you to get the point. I mean, even for me, uh, so I write out the functionality. I mean, some math, so we can easy to understand. So the functionality here is that uh, we have the city one have input uh, Q1, uh, Q2, C uh, Q1, uh, CT2 uh, two have input uh, Q2. Uh, in, in the wastewater, uh, like the resource, they have something called concentration. But I think you can think that it is some kind of uh, coefficients and it's held by someone. It's not uh, known by the CT1 or CT2. And the output of computation here, we want to do like the CI here is just the coefficient, right? You want somehow to send uh, the coefficient time with the flow. Uh, so Q2, Q1 here is some information that you get the area S, right? The point of the point S and Q2, some, something catch at the uh, T1, uh, uh, sorry, the point T. And the requirement here that we don't want any information leak except the final uh, output. It's clear about the problem that we want to solve. All right. So, uh, what is the solution? So we uh, use homophic encryption. Uh, before going into our solutions, uh, I want to, I think you know about encryption, right? So I want to clarify a bit about homophobic encryption because uh, it is the key point of this presentation. So I think you know about encryption, just uh, you, encryption, we have uh, the key generation, gives you the public key and secret key. And this is a public, public uh, key encryption, right? Uh, you have um, uh, the metric M, you use the public key, you can encrypt it. And you decrypt, you use the symmetric key, you can decrypt it. And then clearly the one, uh, it gave you the same thing, right? Uh, for homophobic encryption, uh, you have, uh, each have extra, each have another, uh, uh, Procedures which call evaluation. So, uh, in, it means that it allow you to do any computation on the encrypted data. So the encrypted C here. Uh, yeah, and the decryption, like you see here, you have X, you encrypt it right, and you compute a function F. On the encrypted data, it means that can be a function f on on x, and then it gave you encrypted of the function f of x. 
And when you decrypt, it gives you the original value. Um, so the key point, so I mean, if we break down that function admin here, you can see like F can be addition, right? You just adding to cybertech. When you decrypt it, it gave you the addition of two uh, plant text. Uh, similarly for multiplication, you do multiply, you do multiply, you multiply to cyber text. And when you decrypt the, 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 the final result, it gave you M1 times M2. Uh, I have a, a toy example in case that uh, it does you you didn't follow previous slides. So for example, encryption gave you uh, double two x right. Uh, you double the plant tech. So I have the plant tech eleven and four. I compute the uh, I compute the encryption. It gave me twenty two and eight, right? And I, I can compute on the cyber tech. It gave me thirty, and because the decryption. Uh, I can divide by two, I get the back 15, and you see 11 plus four equal to 15. Yeah. All right, I think it's enough information about homophobic encryption. Uh, so this is the, the summary for that. All right, so yeah, uh, I don't want you to keep lost the problem we want to solve, so I just put it here again. So what we want to compute here is uh, Q1 times C1 minus Q2 times C2. So the program statement that we want to compute. All right, uh, now uh, we can go to the protocol. Uh, first, we should have someone have the key, right? So uh, we have this one considered like the C22, and they have secret key and public key, and they know they have all the public key to uh, they send all the public keys to all the parties. Um, and so uh, to compute the function what, that we want, the CD1 of a loop version send encryption of the Q1 to the server. And similarly, the CD2 send encryption of C2 to the server. Uh, yeah, very simple, right? The server, because the server have C1 and C2, they can compute that one, but this one, can be like when you compute this equation, it's actually encryption of Q1 times C1 minus Q2 times C2, right? This is what we want. And so clearly the server just returned uh, the encrypted R to the CT2 and the CT2 can decrypt and learn what they want to compute, right? Yeah. And clearly, uh, all the information under encrypted form. So you learn nothing about, you learn nothing about the server, learn nothing about uh, the Q1 and Q2. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, and um, they, they have a few more complicated protocols. Uh, I'm sorry, a few more complicated uh, functionality. Like for example, if you can, the data is not just only the uh, the flow, right? Only the data, the sample. It also contain the time collection. So what if the C2, yeah, what if the C2 here, they want to query the time? Uh, like they, they want to query the, the this, uh, I mean, they will want to query the, the, the flow at the point uh, for for the catchment error C for the error C at the point T at the time T, right? You can always make uh, like the the previous slide I present is a very simple uh, you know, protocol, a very simple functionality, and people don't use that one for now. They add, they, they keep adding more features, right? And the one I I'm showing right now is they adding a time T. And what if you want to have that? output of this one at the time t. So it equivalent like q1 is the collect q1 t is the 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 sample that you collect at the time t, right? Yeah. Uh, with the complicated uh, uh, functionality, uh, you can I mean 
I think you know how to do it. Uh, very simple, right? I just, how how about it? I just add the T. If CT just sends encrypted T to the server and server compute first, the server compute like, they do the minus, right? They, they just want to check if E equal to zero or not. I mean, if they have the same time or not, right? And the, the I here, uh, sorry, the I here is, uh, indicate, if one it indicate that the time is March and if zero indicate that the time does match, right? So the server can return all time I to the CT2. And you see, if it not equal to zero, it will be canceled out, it doesn't count in the final output. Um, I mean, yeah, I think it, uh, I just, uh, it's kind of understandable. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, yeah, but our protocol is not like that because uh, computing is expensive. And what can we do? Uh, we propose another protocol that allow you to distribute the E computation to all the parties. Yeah, I, I, I think maybe you want, you might get lost. If you want to understand the protocol in detail, uh, you can send me the email or talk offline. But this is what, this is the simple version. Uh, I think it's understandable. Uh, and then uh, another problem of this protocol is that what happens if, if this server and the C221 collude yeah, just remind you that the CD1 here have the secret key and the servers have all the data, encrypted data, right? Include the encrypted data of CT1. So if they are called they can learn input of the CT1, right? Because they have the encrypted key. So we propose to you multi-key SE. Uh, what is that? Uh, we will go later in a few slides later. Also, uh, another thing is uh, the problem I present only for two parties, right? And how to extend it into multiple parties. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so we, uh, in this talk, uh, we only go to something about the solution one, a uh, second uh, thing, a second uh, problem. Um, all right. So I want to go into a bit into about SE and how to Im improve the existing SE. Uh, why, we, why we need to do that? Because you see, we need to use multiple key SE and we also need to use SE for multiple parties. Okay. So before presenting uh, our new SE scheme, uh, I want to show you the state of the art SE constructions, right? Uh, so the first one is uh, the traditional SE. Uh, people do usually prefer it as single key SE uh, because the schemes only have one secret key. And uh, all the data is so and all the data is encrypted under single key, uh, in the public key, right? <clears throat> so as I mentioned in the previous uh, slides, uh, this one is not related because what happens if the secret key holders uh, is compromised, right? If the if one of the key holder compromised with the server, they learn everything. This is a problem of uh, traditional secret key. <clears throat> um, all right, so we need, as I mentioned before, we need multiple party or multiple key SE. And what is that? So in multiple key SE or multiple parties, each user have its own uh, secret key. Right. So it means like you have your key, you have your own key for your home, then no one can open your, your, your door, right? So it can prevent 
a single point uh, fail, uh, fail, uh, problem as I mentioned before. Yeah, because if this guy collude with the, the server, they learn nothing because they require the keys of different parties. All right. Um, yeah, but however, uh, the multi-party keys uh, actually, or multi-party or multi-key actually, they have problem because it, the decryption required the all secret key how the participant in the participate in the process. So in wastewater community, for example, people do not know much about computer science, maybe some of them, yeah. And maybe the server might shut down, right? And if the, their server shut down, what happens? They can't do the computation. Uh, so it is not the good, uh, yeah, it is not the good uh, solution, especially for all the community. I mean, uh, for not non-computer science or someone who have uh, not strong servers. All right, so, uh, and we have another term called threshold HE uh, to introduce was to solve this problem. And in that THE, uh, they have, uh, they have, if user have the key, the, the similar like, like previous uh, multi, multi party key or multi key SH, um, if user have the secret key, and the, the good point is that the decryption requires a certain, a certain number of key holders. Right? So it's very good uh, for, for the server is not stable and it's allowed to drop out. Uh, however, the current construction is not compact or required to trust the key setup. Yeah. So using the current scheme for THE and you apply that one for wastewater uh, computation, you still need to trust the key setup, right? And when you do it, you when you deal with the big data, uh, the the protocol is not compact. It means that it's not efficient. It becomes very big uh, data to send back and forth. So we introduce something we call dynamic TSE. Uh, I will go a bit further about that one, but this one can first can solve all the problem of assisting HE, um, uh, HE scheme. It includes, it's a, a loud dropout. It have a compact, I mean, efficient, and uh, it don't require the trusted key setup. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so what we, so this is the main contribution of our scheme. Um, And we also, in addition, we also support the new user. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, in addition, we also support the new user during the computation. So NACT, in my previous example, can join the computation without, like, without start from this beginning, without uh, uh, having the key set up or different, all the thing with different parties. All right. Yeah, I think in this talk, I just got very big, I mean, very high level idea about what is our GSE scheme look like. Uh, so first, uh, unlike previous scheme, uh, the key setup is computed by different parties. And any, uh, any 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 T any T party can reconstruct the key, and the main question here: if you don't have the trusted setup, so which is the secret sharing scheme? Um, I'm, I'm missing the sharing here. But what is the secret sharing scheme? Uh, we can use. So we use Shamir secret sharing. Uh, I'm not sure it's very popular in crypto. Uh, community. So the Shamir secret sharing uh, kind of uh, it rely on the 
polynomial interpolation. Let's say I, I have S, uh, and somehow I want to secret share all the SIs to the parties. Um, so very simple, I can choose a random polynomial of degree t minus one, because I want any t parties can, can compute x, right? So I choose a random polynomial, and it's go to row zero, a point zero, and s. And each share will be the point on the polynomial i and fi. And because, and because any t point can reconstruct the f of x, right? Because the degree is t minus one. So it means if I give you t points, you can recover s. Um, so uh, in um, Shamish Gresha range, uh, they have a, a good property like they have additive uh, property. If you have one share, uh, you have a share S1 of S and you have the share S1 prime of S prime. You can compute, you can locally compute the share of S plus S prime. Yeah. All right, I think let's go back to what we want. Uh, so uh, uh, again, the main goal is we want to secret share the key. We use Shamir Shikra Shari. So this is the key take home message. Yeah, but the problem here again, how to uh, compute the SK without the Jotic uh, setup? Uh, yeah, probably I go a bit more detail. Uh, so in our scheme, uh, we choose a set of tea party, we call it pilot. And uh, and all the party in non pilot. And somehow uh, each pilot choose a random uh, random secret value. And because the homophy in uh, because the additive properties in some each crash. In, uh, somehow uh, they are all secret skits, right? By compute the sum. Hello, me. Um, uh, you're still you're muted. It seems like maybe we lost connection. Can you reconnect and share uh -huh. screen again? Yeah. All right. All right. Sorry about that. I don't know. Oh, that's good. You're back. Thank you. Let me check my Wi-Fi. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's somehow when you got right. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah, and any tea party can, uh, as I mentioned before, any tea party can compute the key. Uh, uh, and also, uh, we want to, so another point here is, uh, I mean, I just highlight a few things in the what we propose. Uh, another thing here is how to do compute decryption. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, I'm, I mean, uh, sorry, yeah, I, I just get lost and then yeah, I don't know where I'm. And dynamic, it means that allow you to join a new, uh, allow the new joint because uh, any any new, uh, the internet is not stable. Yeah, any new, uh, any new user can, they can, um, uh, they can have their own shares, right? And also the performance when you do the decryption, 
uh, this allow you to it's a lot drop out right uh, so now how to the question here is how to uh, generate the new share or perform uh, uh, the decryption so we do log run interpolation so I just go very quick here because log run interpolation you can have uh, uh, you can have uh, the the your key, the old key right and the, with that log run coefficients and then somehow you can compute if one party news they can compute the new their own new key right? um and also but how however if you send fk with this lagrange interpolation to the red party here they can learn it's individual as at sk right so we want to prevent that one uh we somehow yeah so we want to prevent that one and uh, i mean this is more technical uh stuff but i think the key idea is somehow you match the sent value here with uh, zero shares and at the end it will be canceled out yeah uh and another challenge is how to uh, perform decryption without revealing the secret key. I think I just got very quick here because if you if you want to learn more, uh, we can you can send me the email because it's easy more very technical detail, right? Um, yeah. Uh, when for decryption, uh, the formula look like this, and which we add the noise. Uh, all right. So probably let's go to something else. I think. Uh, so I want to say, I want to say why it, uh, a main important thing here is, I, I told you several things, but the main important thing here, why our scheme is compactness. This is the key, the goal, right? So the take home message here is that uh, we just follow the single key, actually. So that's why the encryption and decryption, e encryption and evaluation just follow the single key, actually. And if you follow the single key, actually, then it will be compactness. Uh, and another thing here is, uh, they have more thing about how to compute public key because I just talking about secret key, right? And now how to compute public key. Uh, so the formula, of pop I mean, which I'll go into the single key, actually, I just gave you like the public key have some different formulas. And uh, we do two things. We use log run interpolation to compute the first term. We use uh, two party computation to the compute the second term. And uh, uh, somehow you add a noise on it. Yeah. So this is all what we propose. Uh, I think I'm sure you might, some of you might get lost uh, about the construction. But uh, yeah, let me know if you're interested on, uh, on it and we can talk more about the detail. Uh, yeah, so here is what we have some number for our scheme. Um, we have, uh, 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 so you can see like uh, even, uh, uh, even we have uh, num like number of uh, of dress how here and the encryption and decryption proportional to number of parties. The proportional mean here is that we we run all the party on the same machine. If you run the party on different machine, it will be like linear, right? And um, the only expensive point here is that uh, we have uh, the key generation. Remember the time, time to 10. So uh, it, it will be, it will be, uh, but it is a one time setup. Uh, all right, uh, so I show you how we improve uh, our existing SE scheme. And uh, the next thing here about further learning, how we can use uh, our scheme actually for further learning. And I just want to remind you. You that uh, we have three with you about secure query bio data, right? So 
The first one here, and I told you about a few slides about some example, how, how the wastewater computes and how about the catchment errors and everything and many things else. Uh, using, uh, and that for in this one, we propose something new for homophobic encryption. And using homophobic encryption, we can apply to privacy preserving machine learning. And how can we do that? Um, yeah, I'm not sure about, I think federated, federated learning is quite popular right now, right? And the key idea here is uh, you want, uh, you have the device and somehow the server want to training on the global device model, right? And similarly, in our case, like wastewater data, we have different city and the city want to do together, want to do some analysis on their data. Um, and uh, what can we do using homophobic encryptions? Uh, before I go into that, I just tell you, I just want to share, uh, to show how the current work, right? So the current one, uh, it use a log upload uh, the W to the servers, and somehow the server can do secure aggregation. And the user input is or WIs, and the output here is we want to compute the sub of the WIs. Yeah. And it's very easy to implement uh, the secure aggregation using homophobic encryption, right? Using the uh, SE. Uh, so instead of sending uh, the W to the server, it uses to send encrypt, in, encryption of the W to the server. And uh, the server can compute on the encrypt data, right? So uh, using our scheme, it support for the learning uh, uh, include dropout, right? This is very popular uh, program in for the learning, federal learning, and uh, it support a new choice. It is something new and federal learning people doesn't consider it. And also our scheme can allow a synchronized update. So if it's very, very important, the synchronized mean that uh, when every time the user, I mean, every time the CD collects something, like you, if, like uh, three of the CD, they collect something and they want to compute some uh, trend, they want to do some training model, they can request the server compute that one. The a synchronized update. Um, and our work, uh, we show like 10 or five, five or 10 times faster compared to the previous work. All right. So the take home message uh, for my talk today is that uh, we propose uh, something new for the homophobic encryption scheme. And uh, it First, it's flexible. Flexible means that it allows you to drop out. It allows you to join the scheme. And the second one here is do not require to trust, trust it setup. So for trust it setup, you remember we use something about uh, uh, lateral interpolation, right? And we rely on additive uh, property of homophobic encryption, uh, sorry, additive property of uh, some musical sharing. And also we, uh, 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 we uh, the new SG scheme is compact. It means that it, the cyber tech and the computation uh, is proportionate, it, it not uh, blew up, right? So uh, because our scheme rely on uh, single key SG, and also, uh, when we use uh, homophobic encryption, especially for DTSE, uh, we can improve the data security in wastewater uh, community, in wastewater database, right? And I prevent that I, I show you in the first uh, few slides. 
And again, uh, TH is a, a popular technique, I mean the general technique. So it can be applied to other problems as well. Uh, yeah, and this is what all my presentation today. And thank you all for listening. Great, thanks. I'm gonna grab this screen back and go through a few announcements, but I have a few questions myself and we've got a question in the chat here. So let me just throw up the, the screen so we can just briefly go over some updates. And then um, those of you who have more questions, feel free to type. So, um, oops, here we go. Uh, I, again, if you have questions, go ahead and, and type them in the chat. But um, a few community updates about Trusted CI. Our next webinar is October 16th at 10 a.m. The topic is enhancing integrity and confidentiality for secure distributed data sharing. Um, our presenter is Subhas uh, Sivagnanam. Um, the EduCause annual conference is, if you haven't registered yet, um, I, I'm not sure if it's still open, but uh, it's October 9th through 12th in, in Chicago, Illinois. And then of course, our trusted CI NSF Cybersecurity Summit is October 24th to 26th in Berkeley, California. Um, I'm, apologies, apolo uh, 23rd through 27th in Berkeley, California. Um, to learn more about the summit, go to trustedci.org slash summit. Registration is still open this week in person. Uh, registration is due on the on Friday the 29th, as well as the, the block of hotel rooms if you want to attend in person. That will be closing on the 29th as well. Um, if you are unable to attend in person, we encourage you to register for the online um, hybrid, or sorry, remote online version. Uh, and with that, let's go back to some of these questions. So first we have a question from the audience. Um, what are the unique challenges of wastewater application domains when you try to apply your approach? Um, yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you for uh, the question. I think this is an exciting question, right? Uh, and in uh, my talk, I slightly mentioned about it, but it's very short. I think only one sentence, I think. And uh, yeah, so the main key here is that uh, wastewater, uh, wastewater application is uh, not for computer science and people, right? Not for computer science and community. It's for someone who not expert, even I'm not expert in crypto. So we really want to design a scheme that kind of black box. And it's it just you a, a building blocks, if black box. Uh, and uh, somehow it's easy for all the people to understand, right? I it can explain to you. So when I, I think, I believe that uh, my first few slides, you understand the work, right? Because uh, you just apply the SE, the SE, the concept of the SE is simple. So the main first challenge, how to use, how to provide, I mean, I mean, in general, the first challenge for apply security crypto for different domains is how easy you can explain them, the scheme to them, right? And how to design a symbolic uh, protocol, which out like let them under let which out like a self contained protocol. This is the first one, yeah. And when uh this is the first challenge, and the second challenge here is for wastewater, some data, uh like in in normal field, uh, like in crypto, people want to hide completely hide everything, but in wastewater, uh, wastewater. Some data is private, but some data can be considered like the metadata, right? Because yeah, for DNA, for example, DNA, uh, genome, everything must be private. But wastewater, it contains genome, but it can contain something called waste, right? <laughs> the waste data, the waste data you can throw out. You don't need to spend your effort to keep the waste data private. So somehow you have to consider like which one is private, which one is published, and in in what I uh, in my slides, uh, you remember the CI, the contrastation. So that information can be published and can be gave to the third party. Yeah. Thank you for the question again. So going back to these different concentrations, um, I yeah. generally are, I'm curious what other types of data you're collecting? Because I know obviously we can test for COVID using wastewater. Yeah. You referenced heroin. So what are some of the other types of things that we're learning about? 
Yeah, yeah, for me, I think for that question, I think I should refer to my collaborators. Okay. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not really like computer. I'm not really wastewater <laughs> researcher. Yeah. Uh, but I know a bit about information. So what we collect here is uh, uh, first uh, ASU we collect data, and as I mentioned, you mentioned uh, as you mentioned, uh, we do we collect the data for COVID nineteen, right? Mm -hmm. Because in the building, um, yeah, they you can know whether it, that they, the heat map or not. So if mm -hmm. there are many people have the COVID, uh, so it means that the building, the wastewater in that building have some, some something, I mean, I don't know, yeah, they have something you can extra. This is the first thing. And the second thing, I think they also mentioned about heroin or something like that. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I know a few things. They told me and I know a few things, but I don't really the effort in that field. Yeah. Okay. So we collaborated with them. They gave me a problem, right? And right. Uh, we try to like because they are in different language, so we try to think out how that problem write out in the math in, under the math formulas, and if I have the math formula, I can propose something. Yeah, so see how we collaboration and very nice collaboration. Yeah, I learn more things. Yeah. So um okay, is this you you were referencing ASU? So you're you so are you using like live production data are you are you currently you know using your your scheme on current wastewater testing sites no i think they like you live collection data so they okay. have a very big team on wastewater in asg we have biodesign center and people call, collaborate with the government the city they mm -hmm. came i i have remember that they came to collect the real data yeah Oh, that's that's very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. And then, yeah. so that is the reason why they can, uh, you know, they have the website. Let, let me check. That is the reason why you can see, uh, like they do it for COVID nineteen and uh, uh, MP. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. I'm not sure, sure if I can find out. I just post on the. Let me check if uh, this is correctly. <laughs> uh, yeah, they collect the data and they put the data on the, yeah, very nice. Uh, they put the data on the, on the, um, uh, the website. Or uh, maybe let me oh, Yeah, I can, um, I can throw it to everyone so that everyone else yeah, in the chat can, yeah. can see so it if they're the curious. Thing. Yeah, so they, uh, they collect the data Oh, I think so. This is the current, right? You see, this is the current. I see. So I mean, yeah. I think yeah. You see, it collect until uh, today. Yeah. 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 Oh, great. Okay. Um, and then um, are you familiar with the concept of technology transfer to practice? Because uh, where you take a new technology and you try to apply it, um, you know, in 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 the regular everyday, you know, commercial world or otherwise. You were yeah. referencing toward the end of your presentation that you thought that this had more applications than just wastewater data. So I was wondering what other things you could see applying this to. Um, yeah, so uh, first of all, for wastewater, and it can apply to genomic uh, data, right? It clearly, you can apply to genomic data. And right now we're working on something. Uh, I mean, this is something we we are working on. So we, uh, instead of, uh, Together with Sway Water, we're looking for bio, bio, biomedical data and see if there any computation, if there are metadata. Just so you know, uh, if we can, if there are real uh, sensitive data and if there are any uh, like metadata we can review. And um, I mean, right now, people do something like uh, decentralize, um, remove the ID. So, uh, like, for example, I go to the hospital. And they get my uh, block test, and right, and right now they store my data like they remove my ID, remove my data purge. Maybe they keep uh, my age and uh, some other information. But but to be honest, uh, it's not a secure way to keep the data. So um, and if you do homophobic encryption, clearly that nothing can be 
uh, can be uh, reviewed, right? So right now we are also working on something related to this problem. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Well, um, uh, any other questions from the audience uh, while we're wrapping up here? Go, feel free to type. Um, do you have any other last minute comments to make, Ni? Uh, no, it's, it's very perfect, very nice uh, presentation. And I mean, sort of very nice uh, panel and I like it. I mean, I mean, this is a chance for us to present what we want to work uh, with, what are you, we, we, what, what we are working on. And um, I think some of your questions uh, can we think about something about next proposal? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we're all about helping people with their next proposals. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much, Ni, for coming to, yeah. to present to us. And uh, thanks to those of you who are uh, who are watching online. Um, I will have a video uh, of this out probably later today. So with that, um, thank you everyone for joining and have a great day. Yeah, thank you again for the invitation. And bye for now. Yeah. Yeah. Bye-bye.